Hey what's going on guys my name is Jim Fahad in this tutorial I'm gonna show you one of the best WordPress theme the Flux theme complete customization. I will show you each and everything what you can do using this awesome WordPress theme. If you don't know this is the number one recommended theme by Elementor. So as a page builder you can use Elementor and I highly recommend that. But sometimes you may feel confused which is the best theme to use either with Elementor or other page builders. That's why in this tutorial I will show you why you should use this awesome WordPress theme. It has tons of options for free what some other premium themes usually don't offer. So after watching this tutorial you can decide if it's the best theme for your website or for your client's website. So you can basically customize every major part of your website using this themes customization option. Like you can customize your header, footer, menus, all over site look and feel, widgets, subfooter widgets, sidebar, block page, single block post page i will show you everything step by step so first let me introduce myself the instructor my name is jim fahad i'm a professional web developer i have been developing websites for more than 10 years even if you need any help for your website or if you want me to build your complete website from scratch you can contact me through my website that's jimfahaddigital.com you will find the link in the description. Alright, let's now start with complete Flux theme customization. And one thing I always say to like this video because you may forget about this video as soon as you close your browser and it's natural human behavior. So if you give a like this video and subscribe this channel, then I will be visible on your home feed next time. In that way, you can always find these useful tutorials later. So please make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel. And you will find timestamp in the description so you can jump anywhere in the video you need. So without further ado, let's get started. Now this is a new WordPress installation. I have tons of tutorials on this channel how to install WordPress and all. If you don't know how, please check out my other videos. I'm assuming you already know that. So now we will be add Flux theme. So from the left appearance, let's click on themes. Now at the very bottom, click here at the very big add new theme icon here. Now let's search for the Flux theme. It's P H L O X. By the way, if you don't have your own domain and web hosting already, I will put a discounted web hosting link on the description. You can get your own domain and web hosting with a 50% discount using that link. Okay, let's now click here on install and let's now click on activate. Okay, our Flux theme has been activated successfully. Now here it says install Flux core plugin. It will give us some extra features. So let's click on install Flux core plugin. Now let's click on activate plugin. All right. So now we have our Flux theme activated and also we have installed Flux core elements plugin. Cool. Now let's have a look how our website is looking right now from top left. Click on visit site. I'm opening it from a new tab. So this is our website looking like this right now. Now let's have a look what Flux theme gave us the customization options. So first from the top bar click on customize. So this is the Flux theme customizer. It gave us tons of options for free and whatever you seeing on the right side I have done nothing with it. These menus, these widgets all came by default. So let's now start with home page settings. Now let's click on home page settings here. So this is the first thing you need to customize. You can see here your home page displays in WordPress by default. It's your latest post. This option has set. 
So make sure you first click on a static page. Then select the page, the page you want to display as your home page. So I'm selecting this home page here and post page. Of course you want to show your blog posts on your post page. And whenever you have done any settings to save that work, click at the top here on the publish button. So our first setting has been done. Let's now go back. And now I want to play with site identity. So let's now click here on site identity. Like you see here, we don't have any logo at this moment. So here is Jimfad production and underneath here is a tagline. So if you want to change any of that, you can change that from here. Like here instead of this text, I want it to say you deserve to be seen like that. But instead of this text, I want to add a logo. So to do that, let's click here on this select logo. Now let's click on upload files, click on select files. And from my computer, I want to select this logo. Now click on open. Now click select. I don't want to crop this. So let's click on skip cropping. So here is our logo. Now from left scroll down, you have options for adding an optional logo here. Then underneath that, here's the logo width. By default, it's 80 pixel. You can increase or decrease logo width from here. Here's the logo max width. So from here, you can set to a specific size in pixel or you can keep it the way it is. And here's the option for site icon. That's basically fab icon of your website. So let's click here, select site icon, upload files, select files. I want to select this fab icon, open it. Now click on select, skip cropping. Here we go. So here at the top of the browser, you can see a tiny small logo. That's basically your fav icon. All right, now let's click on publish to save our work. Now go back. Now you can see our main header here. So logo on the left and menus on the right. But if we want, we can add a sub header at the top of our main header. So to do that, let's click here on this header and then click here top header bar and let's now enable display top header bar. I will describe about all this option a little bit later because before that I want to discuss about menus. So let's now click here on menus. So by default, you can see there are three menu options. Here you can see top header menu, then header primary menu and then footer social menu. So if we now click on header primary menu, this middle one. So this one is the basically this menu on the top right of the header. So here this page links came by default. So you can add a new menu or you can delete a menu. So if you want to delete this news menu, just click on this down arrow icon and then click here remove. It's instantly gone. Even if you want, you can order or reorder these menus. If you want to add a new menu item, then you need to click on this button, add items. Then you can add any pages or if you want to add a custom link, then you need to click here, custom link. You can put any URL here. For the moment, I'm putting here hash and link text, let's say service one, then click on add to menu. And I want to add a couple more. So I created these three intentionally because I want to make them sub menus under about menu. So to do that, I'm dragging this service one under the about and dragging it a little bit right. Also service two and service three on the same way. Now let's click on publish to save our work. So this is our header primary menu. If you have a look on the menu location, you see here header primary navigation is checked. Now let's go back and have a look on other menus. So here's the top header menu. Let's click here. So here you can see the terms about and privacy policy. And here underneath you can see header secondary navigation is checked. That's why this menu is showing at the top here at the top bar left. And if we now go back here, you can see another menu. It says footer social menu. Let's click here. We cannot see this menu yet, 
because we have not created any Facebook, Instagram or Twitter social link. But by default, you can see here footer navigation is checked for this menu. So whenever we will add any social media links, this menu will be automatically appeared on our footer on the right side here. We can see that shortly. So for now, let's go back. Go back one more time. Now I will show you all the customization options one by one. But before that, I want to add some dummy content inside our home page. And I want to do that for really quick. All right. So here I have made all these home page sections using Elementor. In this tutorial, I'm not describing about all these because this tutorial is all about Flocks theme customization options. And if you also want to learn how to make these complete sections using Elementor, I have complete tutorials on that. I will put those tutorial links on the description or you can go to YouTube and search for Jim Fahad Digital. I mean in this channel, there you will find all these step by step long tutorials where I have shown how to create a complete website step by step using Elementor Page Builder. And in this tutorial, we will be discussing about all this Flux theme customization option because even if we create our inner whole page using Elementor Page Builder, we still need to learn about this customizer because our heading, I mean header, footer, subheader, all these settings are coming from this customizer. So of course this is not optional. You must should learn about the customization option first. Then you can check out those tutorials. So now let's go first on general. Let's click here on general. So first let's click on general layout. So this is the website layout right now. So you have options here. If you want, you can make it full width or if you want, you can make it boxed by clicking here. And I'm pressing command minus minus couple more times. So you can understand what's happening. So you can see here is the site max width is 1200 pixel. You can increase or decrease that from here if you want to make it 1000 pixel like that. You see it's more narrower right now. We can increase the width more like 1400 pixel or 1600 pixel like that. But I want to keep it default that's 1200 pixel. And also instead of boxed, I want it to be full width. So I'm selecting this one and I'm pressing command zero to see it in real width. Now let's go back. Now let's go to the general typography here. From here, you can change all the text, fonts, font size, font family, font weight, everything. Also, you will find these options on Elementor Page Builder. So you can change this typography from both places. Let's now go back and let's click on website socials. Like we said, we want to show our social media links on the footer right here. So to do that from left, let's scroll down a little bit here. You can see the options for Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus. Is Google Plus is still available? I think no. They should remove that from here. So here I'm putting my Facebook page URL here, my Twitter handle. Also I'm putting some social links really quick. All right, now if we have a look on our footer right, now we can see all the social icons. So if we click any of that, that will take us to that specific social media. Cool. Now let's click on publish here to save our work. Now let's go back. Now here's the option for page animation and preloading. Now let's click here. From here you can enable page animation by clicking here like this. So if you want any animation before your page load, you can set that animation type from here and you can see all this preview from this left. So if you hover over on any of it, you can see the effect. So if you want to keep that, you can enable this page animation option. But for now, I'm disabling it. Also, you can add enable page preloading option by clicking here. 
So if you select add loading image by clicking here, you can add any preloading image until your website is fully loaded. So you can add that kind of option from here. But for now, I'm disabling this. I'm just showing you what options they given us for free. So let's now go back and let's click now on custom JS code. So if you know JavaScript code, you can write your own script here. So this is the option for that. Let's now go back. And then this option is very important. That's Google API keys and SEO. Let's click here. Like if you want to add Google Analytics code or Google Maps API key, you need to do that from here. Like if you want to enable Google Analytics, you need to go your analytics account and you need to click on this gear icon that's admin icon. And then from here, click on tracking info here, then click on tracking code. And here you will find this code tracking code. This is small tiny code. You need to copy that like this. I'm copying this and let's now go back to our customizer and I'm pasting the code here. So in this easy way, you can enable your Google Analytics code inside of your website. Now let's click on publish to save your work. Now let's go back, go back one more time. Let's now have a look on appearance. So let's click on appearance. And here first we can see website background. So let's click here. Again, I'm zooming out the page to make you understand properly. So here you can see the option for enable background. If I turn it on, then you will have the option to set background color for the whole website. So if you click here, you can pick a color. So for the moment, if I pick, for instance, a reddish color and click on apply, you cannot see it at this moment because as it says for this, you need to set your layout to boxed layout. So if we go back and go back one more time, if we go to general, to general layout and if we select website layout to boxed and for instance let's make the max site width to 1000 pixel now you can see the background color to that red color that we have set from here under appearance then website background here we have set the color to red so not only color you can add any background pattern from here or even if you want you can add any background image as a background of your whole website but i don't want any background color so i'm turning it off also now let's go back to general then general layouts i want to make it to full width and max width let's keep it 1200 the way it was now let's go back to appearance again here's the appearance so we have seen the website background option now let's have a look on content background here we can set the background color for our content so if we now select this color picker and if we select a red color here and if we click on apply now you can see the whole inner content now get the red color but i don't want that so i'm removing it to remove it click on this x icon from here and click on apply it's gone let's now go back and here's the option for website frame let's click here so if we enable site frame by clicking here now you can see a border all around of our website so it's basically the site frame if we want we can change the color from here like if we want a blue frame color we can pick the color from here like this and click on apply so it's not looking great on this website but sometimes it looks great like if you have a photography website so on some particular website this kind of frame looks cool but i don't want it in our this website so i'm disabling this one let's now go back and have a look on skin options i'm clicking here skin options so if you have video player or audio player inside of your website then you can change the player skin from here like if you want a dark background and whitish icons or white background and dark icons you can select the skins from here and then underneath that you will find the pagination skin like if you have great number of blog posts in that case you need this kind of pagination so you can select the pagination skin from here cool 
now let's go back and here's the option for mobile browsers like if you want a different color for your mobile browser toolbar you can select that color from here so let's now go back and also here you will find the option for forms like within the default form of this theme which fields do you want to keep or not you can select that from here but i'm personally not a big fan of this option like we all use different plugins for our website forms like contact form 7 or gravity forms so i really don't care much about this option so let's go back now go back one more time now we scroll up at the very top of our website because now we want to have a look on the header the header customization options so let's now click on header so let's first have a look on header section let's click here here you will find the different header layout options like by default here's the logo on the left and menus on the right but if you want to reverse that you can select this option so now logo on the right and menus on the left i don't know who wants that so here is more other option even if you don't want any header you can select this no header option now here is no header but i want our header so i'm clicking on the first option our header is back now let's have a look on the other options from here you can set the header width you can set the header height then if you want you can add the search button inside this header right so if you turn it on you can see the search icon here inside this bar this menu so i'm turning it off if you want you can add social icons as well by clicking here now you can see the social icons inside this menu bar i mean inside the header but i don't want that because i already have the social icons at the top menu bar so i'm deselecting this one now here also we have the option for displaying the logo or hide the logo and from here you can enable or disable this border so if i click here to disable this border now you cannot see the border underneath the header but i want that so i'm turning it on again so here we got back our border now let's have a look on other options here also you can add header animation you can add overlay header and even if you want you can change the background color of the header so if you select this color picker and drag this to the red now you can see our header become red so you can change your header color anything you want but i want it to be white so i'm clicking on this x and click on apply cool so you see we have got tons of options to customize our header let's now go back now let's go to inside header menu now here's the option for sub menu skin so here underneath about we have our sub menus this is appearing in this way right now but we can change it from here if you click on this skin and now have a look it's dark skin right now it looks cool so let's keep it and let's have a look on the other options here we have options for different animation effect so if we select this one if we now hover over on our menu now we can see our sub menu with a nice delay animation that looks really cool let's now have a look on other options so here's the option for display sub menu indicator so right now if you have a close look you can see a sub menu indicator a down arrow here so people can understand there is sub menus under this about menu but if you want to turn it off you can deselect this one from here on the left now you see the down arrow is gone but i want that it looks cool to me so i'm turning it on and here is the option for display menu splitter if you have a close look you can see there is some dots in between all the menu items if you don't want that you can deselect this option from here so now that dot menu splitters has gone it looks much better now now let's click on publish to save our work and let's now go back now let's have a look on burger menu so i'm clicking here on burger menu but before that we need to enable our burger menu so let's go back and go inside our header menu not here let's go inside header section and let's select the second header layout this one 
now instead of in line menu you can see a hamburger menu here and we can customize all of these options from that burger menu option so let's go back and let's now go inside burger menu option here so from here you can select which icon you want like if you want this one a bigger one or the bold one you can select these from here also you can change the burger color from here and here is couple more option like burger menu location by default it's looking like this if we now click on this burger the menu items are displaying in this way if you close this it's disappeared now if we scroll down on the left here is the option for toggle type animations so here you got couple more options like if we select this one now let's click on this hamburger and here we got the animation and if we click on this plus icon here is the sub menus appears cool let's now close this and i'm just showing you what's possible but personally i don't want this hamburger menu so i'm going back and from inside header section i'm selecting the first layout let's now click on publish to save it and now go back now here's the option for top header bar i'm clicking here so right now the top header layout is the menus on the left and the social icons on the right so you can see we are getting this layout from here on the left so if we want to change this to something like this option here now here you can see the social icons on the right and on the left we can add any text or call to action so if we scroll down a little bit you can see a field message on top header bar so here we can put our phone number or quick email address like we can say here call us and then we can put our phone number like this also here we have the options for changing the background color of the top header all right now let's go back and here's the option for full screen search if we click here we will find the option for full screen search skin like if we click on this search icon right now we can see the skin is white let's close this and if we select this dark skin and if we now click on this search icon you can see the dark skin the black skin right now actually this looks more cooler to me so i'm keeping this one so let's now close this and now go back and here also you have the options for header typography and top header typography like if you go inside the header typography you can change these menu items colors their fonts their font size everything from here i'm good with the default one but you can change everything from inside here so now let's go back and go back one more time before going inside footer and widgets let's have a look what's inside extras so let's click on extras so first here is the option for go to top button if we click here like by default we have a go to top button here you can see on the top right sorry on the bottom right corner here is the top two button and by default it's on the right if you want it to be centered you can do that by clicking here now it's centered you can see it here or you can make it left aligned like this it's now on the left side also you can disable it by clicking here but i want it so i'm enabling it and i want it on the right side here cool let's now go back and here's the option for login page let's click here so this is a cool part you can change your login skin from here so i'm showing you from other browser like this is the default wordpress login page so even if you want you can change this from here you can set different login message on that page then here instead of this wordpress logo if you want to set your custom logo you can set that from here so you have all these cool options here inside this login page if you want you can do that from here so let's now go back also here's the option for 404 page and maintenance or coming soon page so if you click here on the coming soon page like if your site is not fully ready or it's under maintenance you can enable this for that moment 
so you can create a maintenance or coming soon page and select that page from here so if anyone comes to your website on that moment they can see that coming soon page or our website is under maintenance that kind of page instead of the broken website that actually looks more professional so you can set all this from here this site looks good and presentable so i don't want to turn on the coming soon mode so i'm turning it off and let's now go back and go back one more time now let's have a look on our footer so here's the option for footer let's now click on it so here you can see subfooter and then subfooter appearance so if you click on subfooter let's turn it on and here is the option for subfooter layout you have different options for that by default it's a three column layout you can set to a single column or four column or five column layout also you can change the background from here like if you want to make it black you can do it from here but we cannot see the background because we have no content on our subfooter so let's now close this for the moment and now let's add some widget inside our subfooter so for now let's click on publish to save it and let's now go back and go back one more time now let's click on widgets as we have selected three columns on our subfooter widget so right now you can see three widget areas here and you can set the first widget from here subfooter first widget area and you can change the second widget from here and you can change this third widget from here so on the third widget instead of this metadata if you want to change it let's click here on the subfooter third widget area and first let's delete this one click on this down arrow and click on remove so it's gone and let's now click on add a widget here you can add any available widgets you have you can add here any contact box contact form before after slider audio or even calendar like this one i'm clicking here calendar so now here you can see the calendar and if you want to change the title you can change the title from here like i wanted to say the calendar now you can see the title here the calendar and when you are good with it click on done to save it now let's go back and click on the subfooter second widget area that means this one so not only the available widgets you can add any external widgets by installing plugin like if you want to add facebook like box or instagram feed you can do that by using plugins so for instance i want to add a facebook like box here so to do that let's go to our wordpress dashboard first and from left bar plugins let's go to add new and here on the top right search bar i'm searching for facebook like box and i like this plugin easy social post feed let's click on install now now click on activate now let's click on allow and continue our plugin is activated we don't need to do anything with it so let's now go back to our customizer and as we have activated a new plugin so we need to refresh our customizer so before that i want to click on publish to save our work whatever we have done and let's now refresh our page our customizer now scroll down to our footer again let's now click on widgets subfooter second widget area and let's now delete the about author widget so scroll down and click on remove so it's gone let's now click on add a widget and i'm searching for facebook like box the plugin we have just installed so here it is easy facebook like box i'm clicking here now here in the title i want to say it follow us on facebook and here inside fan page url i want to put my facebook page url here we cannot see it yet but for now let's click on done and click on publish to save it and then refresh this page one more time let's now scroll down at the very bottom of our page here we go now we can see our facebook like box so people can like our facebook page from inside our website cool 
all right now let's have a look on the page options but as we have created this home page using elementor page builder so we cannot understand properly how this page customizer works so to demonstrate it properly i made a dummy page here i know this page looks super ugly super boring i only made it to demonstrate you the page customizing option of the flux theme so to customize this page let's click here at the very top customize now let's click on the page option here and now let's click on page layout so here's the option for page sidebar position right now there is no sidebar in this page because no sidebar is selected but if we want a sidebar we can select this layout so now we have our sidebar on the right if we want it on the left we can select this layout let's keep it on the right and here you can see a border on the left of this sidebar if you don't want that you can disable this by selecting this layout like this but i like the border and then here's the option for display content top margin so if we scroll up a little bit we can see some margin at the top if we don't want that we can click here so now there is no top margin so for the moment we can keep the top margin and then from here you can select the custom max width like you have the option for 1000 pixel 1200 pixel so if we select 1000 pixel this page will be more narrower but i like the default 1200 pixel now let's go back and here's the option for page title so this is the title bar section if you don't want it to display you can disable it from here so it's gone but if you want it you can enable it from here again and here you have couple more options for layout preset like if you want a dark layout like this you can select this one or this one so there are plenty options for you so let's keep it the way it was the first one now let's go back and here's the option for page typography so you know you can change all the font size font family letter spacing all the typography from here and also here you can see the breadcrumbs you can change this color from here is the option for breadcrumb color if we select this one and if we make the color to red now you can see the breadcrumb arrow becomes red now click on apply also if you want to change the breadcrumb link color you can change it from here click on this pencil icon and from here click on this color picker if you want to make also red then drag it to the red color now click choose now you see the breadcrumb home link is become red cool now let's click on publish to save our work now let's go back and go back one more time we only have block customization remaining and in this website we have not posted any blog post so only to demonstrate you i'm switching to a different website that has already some blog post all right so here is a blog page to customize it let's click here at the customize at the top this blog page looks pretty decent but i want you to show how you can change the look and feel of your blog page the way you want so to do that let's click here on this blog now click here blog page so right now blog template this structure is selected so if we select this option now you can see nice tiles layout also there are a couple different options like if we select this one so it's a masonry layout so let's select the first one the way it was now let's have a look on the other options here's the option for display featured media so if we disable it we cannot see these medias so let's keep it as it is here you can change custom max width also here you got the option for image aspect ratio and here you can see with each blog here is blog post date blog category so you also have control over that like if you see here display post information if you disable this now there is only title and the excerpt so if you click here to enable it right now you can see the post date category and even if you want to enable or disable it one by one you can do it from here like display category display comment post date you can enable and disable it the way you want 
and from here you can change display author or read more button text you can exclude post from blog page that has no media with it from here then you have also options for load more type here is read more text so right now you can see here it's written read more so instead of read more if you wanted to say any other thing you can change that text from here and here's the option for blog sidebar position right now there is no sidebar but if you want a sidebar you can select this layout so right now sidebar position on the right but on the blog page i don't want that sidebar so i'm keeping it full width and here's the option for block content length you can make it summary or you can make it the full text so in blog page summary always looks good also you can specify the summary length how many characters do you want to display here you can select that from here cool now whatever changes we made to save it let's click here on publish button and if we click now any of these blog post that will take us to that single blog post page so i'm opening a blog post from a new tab i'm right clicking here open link in new tab so this is the single blog post page right now here is the title here is the details of blog here is the author and here is the comment section it looks pretty decent now let's have a look what other customization option flux theme gave us so let's click here on the customize now to edit this single blog post page click on blog again and in this time let's click on single post and here again you have the option for sidebar or full width i want to have sidebar on single blog post page from here you can change the featured color also custom max width you can change it from here even you can change content style from here so if you click here it looks more narrower but i like the earlier one so this one also you can enable or disable display content top margin display post media option from here same as the blog page so you have control over all of it the post date author name comment category name you can disable or enable it everything from the left like the blog page also if you scroll down here you can see the author name then tag option share option you can enable and disable everything from here and here also you can see previous post you can change that from here so if you change the skin to this one the second option now you can see the previous post with nice little thumbnail it looks really cool all right now let's go back and if we now go to block category and tag on the same way we have customized the blog page you can customize all of your category and tags page on the same way from under this blog category and tag option now let's go back and finally here you also have the option for single post typography so if you click here you can change all the text color font size font family everything from here and here is the last customization option that's additional css i'm clicking here so if you are good at css you can type or write your own css here for instance if you want to change all the paragraph color of your website so you can write some css something like p and then if you want to make it red now you can see all the paragraphs becomes red but it looks weird i want to make it hash 111 111 or hash 777 and when you are good with it let's click on publish to save it so in this way you can write any additional css if you feel like to add all right so this is it so it's really unreal they gave us this much customization options for free and that's why they are one of the best wordpress theme and also their number one recommended theme by elementor page builder if you have learned anything new from this video please give this video a thumbs up and please consider subscribing this channel if you want to see more similar useful tutorials and feel free to comment down below if you have any questions also if you need any professional help you can contact me through my website that's jimfahaddigital.com i'll put that link in the description thanks for watching for now bye bye